Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Overfield Zook, and I am the Director of Programming here with the Shenandoah Community Capital Fund. I'm really excited to spend some time with you today to talk about completing a break even analysis for your business. Um, doing a break even analysis is a really critical first step uh, when you're getting your business ready to go. Um, this way, you ensure that you know you're charging enough for what you're selling. So if you have questions after this video is over, please feel free to reach out to SCCF at any time. You can do so through our website or directly via email. Uh, we're happy to help um, anytime and maybe go into some more questions specifically about your business with this break-even analysis. But otherwise, I'm really excited to jump in. Um, also, in our video description below, we've got a great template that I strongly encourage for you to use. Um, Otherwise, you're welcome to create your own template, um, either on Excel or Google Sheets. The beauty of using our template is that all of the functions and formulas are already in place. So you can just start plugging in numbers and things will automatically calculate and make things super simple for you. So doing a break-even analysis uh, will tell you how much of a certain product you'll need to sell to recoup the cost of keeping your business open and producing and buying that product. When you pair that with how many days a week or a month you're open, you can figure out exactly how much or how many of a certain product you need to sell um, in a month or even on a day to stay profitable. This kind of break-even analysis that we're gonna work on today is different from a company-wide break-even analysis. And this one really gets into the specifics of each product you sell. If you sell lots of different products, you know, for example, if you're in a restaurant or you sell, you know, t-shirts or something like that, we highly suggest that you do a break-even analysis for each item. This might seem like a lot of work, but the good news is, is you'll be able to duplicate a lot of the numbers um, from product to product. So once you've kind of got the process going, it'll be a lot easier to complete for each item. So before we begin, some keys and, and some things that you want to have um, ready um, for success. First is you'll want that template, that break-even analysis template that we have, or a blank spreadsheet if you want to build your own. Secondly, you'll want a really thorough list of your fixed costs uh, to run your business. And we're going to talk um, in a minute about what fixed costs are. And then lastly, you're going to want to have uh, a list of your variable costs per product. Um, and we'll talk through what variable costs are in a moment as well. Sometimes this is referred to as cost of goods sold or your COGS. Um, but we'll want to have a list of both. Okay, so first let's talk about our fixed costs. Okay, fixed costs are things you'll pay to keep your business open regardless um, if you make any sales or not. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're, you have customers coming through all day or if you have one person, these are the things that you have to pay to keep your business open. Okay, examples of these fixed costs are your rent, right? If you have a, a brick and mortar store, um, you know, things like your heat and your air conditioning, your internet, um, your point of sale uh, system, web hosting fees, if you do more with e-commerce, insurance, um, and don't forget salary for you and your employees. Okay, it's probably best to break these costs, these fixed costs down by month. For example, you might only make uh, web hosting fees once a year, you know, you're using Squarespace and you pay that once a year. But think about what that actually costs per month, right? If it's $80 once a year, it's actually something else when it's split by 12. Okay. The other kind of expense for your business is variable costs. All right. And these variable costs depend and relate directly to how much of something you sell. All right, these costs can include the physical items you need to make the product. Example, again, like if you're, you're selling t-shirts, what, what does it cost to buy those in bulk? You know, do you need dye to do tie-dye? Do you, if you're making candles, how much is the wax cost? Um, but should also include things like what you pay yourself and in your employee, your employee um, any packaging that you need for that product. Again, of going back and thinking about, okay, you're selling a candle, you need to put the candle in something, right? And if you are doing e-commerce, uh, what are shipping costs associated? Um, other things people sometimes forget about is marketing. Um, so make sure to include that as well. So the cost of goods sold, a cost of good sold, um, again, are payments that you make uh, directly related to selling your product or service. And they will change into relation to selling your product or service um, versus those fixed costs that we talked about that are gonna be costs regardless as if you sell anything, 
Okay. Sometimes these variable costs can also fluctuate depending on the season. Um, when we jump into our template example, you're going to see that we're pretending to be Sarah who owns a sandwich shop. Okay. And you think about Sarah, you know, during the peak of the summer, her tomatoes are probably really affordable, but then when it's February, she's going to have to buy them from some importer. It's going to be more expensive. So those costs are going to vary depending on month. So make sure you kind of put a buffer in for the sake of this exercise, always err on the side of higher for your variable costs. So if you know over the course of a year, the cost of those tomatoes can fluctuate, um, do this break-even analysis with that higher number in mind. Okay, so if you haven't sat down to calculate out your fixed expenses and your variable expenses per product, now is the time. Pause this video, take as much time as you need to really think through those lists. Um, and think about the things that you pay weekly, monthly, yearly, and, and make sure that you have a really comprehensive list. It might even be worth going back and looking at bank statements or tax returns um, to make sure that you're not missing anything. You know, this might seem overboard, but you want to be really as thorough as possible for this exercise to be successful. Okay, are we all back? We all got our lists now? Wonderful. So let's go ahead and pull up our template now. Okay, so as you can see in our break even exercise, uh, we have a blank worksheet, which is the one you're going to work from. And then we have Sarah's sandwich shop answers, which is kind of our example one. So you can kind of see how to do it. All right. And it's broken up by those fixed expenses, those variable expenses, and then some pricing scenarios. All right. So let's start with this fixed expenses. So hopefully you guys have gone ahead and done your done your list um, for your fixed expenses. And this is where on the blank spreadsheet, you're going to put those numbers in, right? And you're going to put in your expenses and what they cost you. And again, if, if it's something that you just pay once a year or once a quarter, you know, break it out by month, whether 12 months or three months. So you have a really good sense. Okay. So once that number is calculated here, it'll appear under your total fixed expenses. All right. And that'll be by month. All right. Now, if you go over to Sarah's, you can she see she's taken this even a step farther, right? And she said, okay, here's what it costs me per month to stay open, but I also want to know what it costs me per day. All right. So let's look at some of Sarah's fixed uh, expenses right now. You can see she's got rent listed that costs her 850. Um, you know, here's her business insurance, which again, probably she only pays once a year, but she's broken it up um, per month. She's got her owner's salary, which is $1,500, which isn't enough, by the way. Um, but you can see that she has all of her expenses in place. She's got, what, she's got five of them listed. There are six of them, right? So you might have six like Sarah does. You might have 25. It just kind of depends on what your business model is. Um, and it's going to be different for each person, and that's totally fine for each business. Okay, so again, she's calculated all of this out. She's summed this up to say, okay, on a monthly basis, I know just to keep my business open, it costs me $2,775 per month to stay open. She took that number and divided it by 24 because she knows that during a 30-day period, she's open six days a week. So she's open 24 uh, or 24 days a week or sorry, days a month. And that gives her a, a per day cost of being open $115.63. Okay. I do suggest kind of doing it both ways. It gives you just kind of different perspective um, on the numbers. Um, if you know, and if you want to really get into the details of, of what you need to be selling each day to stay uh, profitable and to break even, then you know, look at it that way. All right, so now we're going to move up to our variable expenses. Again, on the blank worksheet that's just at the top of the page. Okay. Depending on what you do, again, your variable expenses might be. There might be 30 of them to make a certain product, or there might just be two. It just depends on what the thing it is you're making. It also might depend on what kind of business you are. If you're, if you're, you know, retail where you're buying something from a seller and then reselling with a markup, that's going to be different than if you're making your own product. If you're selling a service, that also looks really different. But everyone's variable expenses are going to go right up here at the top. So let's take a look at Sarah's. All right, so for this purpose of this break-even analysis today, Sarah is looking at her signature turkey sandwich. All right, this is her hallmark that everybody comes into her sandwich shop to buy. And so what she's done is she's broken out her, um, her expenses to make one of these sandwiches, right? This is her cost to her to produce the sandwich. 
All right. So first thing is the turkey, all right? She knows that she can buy her turkey for $5 a pound. She gets 10 slices, all right? So what that means is that per slice, it costs 50 cents, okay? Because she's taken her $5, divided it by, by 10, because she knows she gets 10 slices per pound. So that means that each slice is 50 cents. Now it's a sandwich, so she uses two slices, okay? So 50 cents times two means that she uses $1 of turkey per sandwich. All right. So she does the same thing with the bread, right? So bread is $3.20 a loaf. She gets 32 slices out of, out of the loaf. So she, again, she divides the 320, which is her cost by the number of slices so that we know that it's 10 cents per slice of bread. Obviously it's a sandwich, so we need two slices. So we multiply 10 cents times two, that gives us 20 cents. All right. And we do that kind of moving forward. We do that with the tomatoes. We do that with the lettuce. We do that with her secret sauce that she buys in the jar. And then another thing that Sarah's done here, which is really smart and that you also want to think about is, okay, when you make a sandwich, you don't just make it and then hand it to the person, right? You, you put it on a plate or you wrap it in wax paper or you put it in a bag, right? So she's thought about the thing that you put the sandwich in. Um, that might be, you know, if you're, if you're doing retail, this is the, the little tag that has the price and the size on it that you're going to need to, you know, clip to the, to the piece of, 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 of clothing. Um, you know, if you're making candles, it's the, it's the glass jar that you're putting it in. If you're doing, you know, tie-dye t-shirts, it's the, the wrapping paper that you put around it before you sell it, right? So think about things like that, about things that not only the thing to make the product, but the thing you put the product in. Um, and then also you'll see with this last line is her labor, right? So she's saying, I can pay someone $9 an hour. They can make 20 sandwiches an hour. So each uh, sandwich has 45 cents worth of labor attached to it as well. So that's something to include when you're doing your variable expenses as well. Okay, so once she's gotten her uh, total cost per product, she knows now that her signature turkey sandwich costs her $2.70 to make. Okay. Now, obviously, you're not going to charge two hundred or sorry, two dollars and seventy cents uh, to your customer because then you'd never make any money, right? And that's that's not great. Um, so let's look at our pricing models now. So if you look over on the spreadsheet now, we've got four different pricing scenarios. All right, and you can see over on the blank template, it's in the same spot. Don't be stressed that there are these error functions here. As soon as you start plugging numbers in, it'll work. Um, it's just, you can't divide stuff by zero. So it's, you know, Google Sheets is, is, is freaking out. <laughs> okay. So let's look over here. So Sarah said, okay, it cost me two seventy dollars to make the thing. What if I charge $5? Okay. So this number right here, this price per unit, because remember up here, we had cost per unit. Now we're saying price per unit. She's saying, what if I charge $5? Okay. What that means is we take our price per unit and we subtract our variable cost. And that gives us here, this gives us our gross income. Okay, this is what you charge minus your cost of goods sold or your variable costs. So that means that for this pricing model, this first pricing model, Sarah is making $2.30 in gross income. Okay. Now you take that gross income and you divide your fixed expenses by that amount. Okay. And what that's saying is, Sarah, we need to sell 1000 207 sandwiches a month if she charged $5, okay? Seems like a lot of sandwiches. So Sarah says, okay, now let's try a different number. Let's, let, let's see if I did $5, okay? So now she's gonna charge her customers $5 a sandwich. Oh, I'm sorry, $7. <laughs> let's look and say she's gonna charge $7 per sandwich. And now she's making $4.30 in gross income, okay? So again, we take our fixed expenses, our 2,775, we divide that by our gross income, $4.30, and that gives us 645 uh, sandwiches that she would need to sell a month. Side note, if you're using our template, these numbers will automatically calculate for you, so you don't need to worry about remembering what these uh, formulas are, um, even though they are written out right here. All right, that's sounding better. This is sounding pretty good. 643 sandwiches a month, that sounds pretty reasonable. You know, if you're open 24 days a month, that's sounding pretty good. But let's go one more. Okay, so now Sarah is gonna say, okay, this is my signature sandwich. People travel from all over the place to eat my sandwich. I'm gonna charge $12. So now we take our $12 um, price per unit and we subtract our variable cost per unit. Now we're making $9.30 in gross income. Okay, so when we take that $9.30 and we divide our fixed expenses with that number, now we only have to sell 298 sandwiches a month. That sounds pretty good. 
Now, Sarah has also wanted to go a little bit deeper, just like we were talking about, and she wants to look at it by day. And that's what price scenario number four is. As you can see, it's still the same number of price per unit, but now she's just dividing it out um, by day as opposed to month. So that means that now she needs to sell 12 sandwiches a day. Okay. Now, all of this gets into kind of some gray area with, you know, pricing models and kind of, you know, what your customer might be willing to spend. Um, it goes into the idea of markups and of like luxury brands and luxury items. Um, and so, you know, what the number you actually choose to spend or to, to charge your customer might fluctuate depending on some of those other things. Um, but what this break-even analysis does is it shows you, okay, where do I need to be with my price point? Where would I like to be with my price point? And where's that happy medium that my customers then are happy with as well, okay? So again, this is your blank spreadsheet. You are welcome to use this from, from the link in our video below. Um, if you have more questions, as I said before, please reach out to SCCF. We're happy to help. Um, otherwise, it's been my pleasure to speak with you today about break-even analysis, um, and I hope this really helps you get your business started uh, with a great pricing model.